combine and have that view over there, that's just pretty awesome. That's almost as awesome as watching that Mike Les guy on YouTube. That is one good looking tractor and grain cart. Hey everybody, it is Farmhand Mike and in today's video, I am out in a field in southeast Dark County, Ohio, just south of the little town of Pittsburgh, Ohio. I am out here with a local farm that is field tiling a couple different fields here. Uh, this is often referred to as laying down drain tile, field tile, having the field ditched. But what they're doing, they're putting in drain tile here, which will help the field drainage, which uh, oftentimes allows the farmer to get in the field, especially in the spring and so forth, uh, a couple days earlier, and just gets rid of the excess water and so forth. Uh, some parts of the country, uh, they are trying to preserve and hang on to all the moisture they get. We get enough moisture here in Ohio and a lot of the Midwest that we have to put drain tile in to get the field to get the work. There is going to be several different machines in use in this video, but to start out, they are putting in a main drain tile right now with a Spiker Model 6160 wheel trencher. So they're going to put this main in right now, and then later on in the video, you're going to see where they're actually going to dig down in. They're going to tee into this main, and then they're going to put a 4-inch drain, and they'll pull that through with a tile plow. This pipe that they're putting in right here is actually going to get teed into an even bigger drain tile. That will eventually run to a drainage ditch or a creek and work on downriver from there. Oftentimes the main tiles are put in with a wheel trencher like you see here and then the smaller tile is plowed in, which you'll see later on in the video. You're going to see a couple times here where this machine is really going to shake uh, as they hit a big rock or something buried down in the ground. Sometimes they have to stop and dig that out with a back door. As this video goes through the whole process of what they're doing here, you can see where the one roll of drain tile ran out. They pulled up with another roll, and they will connect those two together. Then he will just drive the truck along, and that will unspool itself, and he'll drive that to the end of the field where they're going to stop. That way the trencher can just keep on going. Also, there was a little clip early on uh, where there was a guy standing behind the trencher with a shovel. He's just making sure that that pipe's getting laid down in there properly, and then just putting a little bit of dirt on top of it to hold it. Once they get that all in place, then they'll come in with the backhoe and they're putting a line in approximately every 50 to 60 feet, uh, just depending on the field and so forth. I think right in this field they were going 60, some guys go 40, uh, other places they go even closer. But they will dip, put a dig in in with the backhoe and then they can back the towel plow in there, pull the towel through, uh, tee into the main drain, pull the towel plow through the field lay the line, and like I said, later on in the video, you're going to see that whole process. And then once that's all done, then they're going to come in with a versatile 256 bidirectional tractor, and they're going to backfill this ditch. I like to give machine specs when I do these videos, but I could find very, very, very limited information on this Spiker wheel trencher here. So if anybody has any comments on them, uh, I assume they were built here in the U.S., but I don't know that. So uh, anybody knows anything about it, got a little story to tell, uh, feel free to comment below and let the rest of us know. And of course they got their laser set up here in the field to help them keep the grade. If you look at the wheel trencher later on on the tile plow, you're going to see how that all works together going off this. They still do get out and manually check the grade every now and then just to make sure everything's going according to plan.
And now let's take a look at the versatile 256 bi-directional tractor in action, backfilling the ditch.
They have now moved on to another field that already has an existing main in place. So they got everything flagged where they want to go. They're going about 60 feet apart here. And the backo is digging down in, finding the main. And what he's going to do then, he's going to put a hole in there, put the T in, and you're going to see that whole process coming up here. So right now he's moving out of the way. Uh, they'll get the hose ready. He'll back the tractor in a towel pop, set it down in, hook up, and off they'll go. They are using a John Deere 8960 tractor here with a Liebrick tile plow on it. The Liebrick tile plow is manufactured by Liebrick Manufacturing out of Continental Ohio and the John Deere 8960 tractor was built in Waterloo, Iowa between 1989 and 1993. This tractor is powered with a Cummins 855 which is also 14 liter 855 cubic inches. These were rated at 370 engine horsepower. These tractors weigh in at approximately 35,000 pounds but you can see they got added weight here and so forth to pull the plow. Uh, this tractor has a 220 gallon fuel tank capacity, has a hydraulic capacity of putting out 39.6 gallons per minute. These tractors sold for approximately $142,000 back in the day. And you could get these with three different types of transmissions in them. You could get a 12-speed synchro, you could get a 24-speed partial power shift, or you could get a 12-speed full power shift. This particular tractor here just has the tile plow on it all the time, and that's all they do with this tractor. I was not able to get any drone footage of the Versatile 256 filling in the trenches, but a little bit about that tractor. That was built in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada between 1984 and 1985. That tractor sold for approximately $41,000. Then in 1985, that was replaced by the Model 276, which Versatile built up until 1990. This farm also has a Versatile bidirectional 276 tractor with a loader on it. These tractors were powered with a Cummins 3.9 liter diesel engine or 239 cubic inches, approximately 100 horsepower. They weighed in around 8,700 pounds and cost somewhere in the $40,000 to $45,000 range brand new back then. After they get the tile plow and everything hooked up and going, then he'll come in with the backhoe, he'll fill in that hole, then he'll go over, move over to his next flag, dig down into the main and start the new line.
As they come to the end of the field here, then the guy standing there is going to cut the tile off, and then he'll put a cap in the end, and then they'll plow that little bit in the ground, and then he'll lift the plow out of the ground, and then move on to the next line. Yeah, I'm also going to show you a close-up here from on the ground of the process. That line is now complete, so he gets the plow lifted out of the ground. He's now going to move back. They'll have the other main dug in. When he gets back there, they'll set in and do it all over again. I have about four more minutes left in this video, but I took you through the whole process of everything that's done here. I do have other field tile videos on my channel you can check out. There's different ways of doing this. The tile plow you see here is one that's mounted to the tractor. There's also ones that hook to the three-point hitch of the tractor. There's pull type ones that hook to your draw bar. And then I also have some videos from Schwedermans, who is a local contractor that does a lot of field tile in, in western Ohio here. And they actually just have a full-time tile plow on steel tracks. Well, they have several of them. So you can go back and check those videos out too. But like I said, a lot of different ways of doing this. There's a lot of places in the country I go where they don't field tile. They're trying to preserve or conserve all their water because they don't get a lot of rainfall like we do here. But this is a pretty common practice uh, through west Western Ohio here, a lot of Ohio and the Midwest. And if you watch this video right to the end here, I show a close-up of them digging down into the main with the backo and teeing into the line. You can get a good close-up shot of that. With that said, I want to thank everybody for watching. Don't forget to do the whole like, dislike, comment below, subscribe, unsubscribe, and also check me out on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at Farmhand Mike. Thanks again, everybody, for watching.